What up guys, that comic awesome here, doing another review, doing Astonishing X-Men number 11. Um, this is the second to the last issue in this run, um, and it's been a pretty decent, decent run. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's not, a, it's, doesn't feel like a real classic uh, X-Men story, it feels like a really good story though. Um, but basically, uh, Protus, who is a, a kind of an energy-based mutant, uh, has taken over a city in Scotland and turned it into kind of his reality, uh, where anything you dream will be real. Anything you want will be real. Um, but the problem with this is um, demonstrated at the end of the last issue when... Uh, two drinking buddies and you know and the one buddy's wife are sitting there and you know they're told that they can have anything they want and so the other buddy turns to him and he's like he's like the only thing I've ever wanted since you know day one you know is her so boom he ends up killing his buddy for his buddy's wife so it goes to show that too much power um, can kind of you know corrupts you know ab was it absolute power corrupts absolutely um, but now, at the beginning of this issue, it's not only this town in Scotland, now he's like seeding these realities all over the world, um, and the X-Men are trying to uh, fight that. And I say X-Men, the team is uh, Psylocke, Gambit, uh, Old Man Logan, Mystique, Archangel, Professor X is back, back, I guess, as this, uh, he took over Phantom X's body. And, um, is now X. Um, there's a twist at the end of this. I will not spoil it. Um, but I don't even want to say the, what I thought of this, the, the twist, because in saying what I thought of it, it will, um, it'll pretty much give it away. But if anyone would like to engage on that. You can comment me, and I will put it, not the twist in the comment, but I'll put my feelings in the comment about it, uh, and what I would compare it to, uh, but, but I won't spoil it, I won't spoil it for anybody. Uh, so you get the seat, you know, again, him seating uh, the realities all over, so you have uh, um, Edinburgh, Copenhagen, Philadelphia, Dublin, Cairo, and Tokyo. What I find weird... In Philadelphia, you have a flying motorcycle car horse thing. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is in Philadelphia. What superhero in Philadelphia does has a motorcycle horse? Is it like Ghost Rider-ish? I don't know. Um, so then you get these like, you know, some really good imagery of the X-Men. So you have like Angel... Old Man Logan, um, I'm assuming that's Rogue, oh yeah, Rogue's in there, Bishop, Psylocke, um, I think this is X, Mystique, and Gambit, and they're all kind of trying to destroy Protus uh, and his um, his reality. Luck, and, and as X is narrating this, uh, you know, he says, you know, the X-Men are kind of at a loss, but the one thing that we do have, which is um, Protus's weakness is metal. Uh, so Archangel has, you know, metal feathers that he can shoot. Logan has, um, you know, his claws. And I love this. He's like, you know, no, no, Logan, why? He's like, you know, McTaggart. He's like, and even if you don't, uh, you're really that deluded. I do. So he's like, if you don't know why I'm killing you, I know why I'm killing you, and that's all that matters. Uh, quick, quick this, uh, quick this um, ad real quick. I'm kind of excited about this. Kind of. It is written by Dan Slott. <laughs> I found this amusing, where it Tony Stark is back in the go uh, red and gold, and is back to the bleeding edge of science and technology. All of the sciences. I just thought of that. It's like. He's going to learn the science. Um, but anyway, so as the X-Men kind of fight on the forefront, 
engaging with Protus, Psylocke and X feet like have to link their psychic abilities to try and push their reality back against uh, the seated realities in those other cities to kind of contain it. So they want to they want to push their reality back um, and contain it. So they're they're trying that. Um, you know, again, meanwhile, you know, all the X-Men are fighting. Okay, the the art to me was the the character art I liked. Like the way the characters were, but I couldn't tell because of there was no real um what am I thinking of? Like a like a setup shot. To really give me any perspective of where or how they're like fighting. You know, it's like, it's just green, green, you know, green, you know, green, purple, you know, green. It's a lot of green and purple. Um, so they come up with a plan to um, full Mystique into, or not full Mystique, but full uh, Protus in becoming his mother, uh, Moira. You know, and he even says here, you know, he's like, I know you're Mystique. I know you're not, you know, this is just an illusion. Um, and she's like, no, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm really, you know, it's like, and he tries, and he's like, look, you know, my mom locked me away, you know, this and that. And she's like, I locked you away. She's like, that was wrong with me. Of course, she hugs him. Now, this is another thing. I don't recall, like, I know Mystique is a shapeshifter, but I don't recall her being able to change her metaphysical, like, composition. Because she becomes metal here to um, hurt Protus. And I don't recall her having um, having that ability. Uh, so, uh, to back up a little bit. Uh, Psylocke and X are kind of struggling. They don't have enough, um, you know, between the two of them, they don't have enough psychic power. So X says, you know, I have a thought. When the Shadow King first attacked, uh, first attacked you in London, you could feel the uh, the network of psychics he was trying to um, access to escape the astral plane. If we tapped into that and use it here, and you know, so they're like, okay, so they kind of tap into um tap into the uh the psychic network you know they i guess they dialed in like miss cleo or or something you know and then you know it starts working um i'm gonna again i'm gonna stop there because if i go any further we're gonna get into spoiler territory and i don't want to do that because this is a good series and you should be reading it and um yeah, I, I like it. You know, again, outside of some some iffy art decisions with the uh, with establishing shots and stuff like that, uh, the story is good. Charles Soule is actually becoming probably one one of my favorite writers right now, just because he does such just a solid job of uh, storytelling. But yeah, that's my thoughts. Subscribe over here, watch some more videos, hit me up in the comments, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time.